Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make a gravity ice dye with a twist. For my setup, I have two plastic sawhorses and I'm using two long pieces of vinyl guttering between the sawhorses. Then I've placed a metal rack in between the two pieces of vinyl guttering. I use my longer pieces of vinyl guttering so that I can actually place another rack and do another shirt on this same setup at the other end. Then underneath the guttering, I have a long plastic container. It's one of those kind like you put underneath your bed to catch any of the runoff from the melting ice and dye. I've placed the shirt on the metal rack. I'm gonna twist parts of the shirt and tuck it down into the metal rack. Then I'm gonna make sure the rest of the shirt is hanging down below in between the two pieces of guttering. I'm going to apply the dye in stripes on the shirt and I'm using a variety of kind of fallish type colors. The colors in the order that I'm going to place them on the shirt are Pagoda Red, Palomino Gold, Oxblood Red, Marigold, and Terracotta, which are all Dharma Trading Company colors. Then the last color I'm going to use is Curry from Pro Chemical and Dye. I'm going to add some additional soda ash over the top of the dye and I'm going to add quite a bit because I'm going to put some pretty large chunks of ice on top of this shirt and I want to make sure I don't accidentally rinse out all of the soda ash that was in the shirt from the initial soaking process. I'm going to add the larger chunks of ice and then I'm going to add some smaller two inch cubes of ice to kind of fill in the area where the bigger ice doesn't cover. On the day that I did this shirt, it was still in the 80s, so I just left the shirt alone and I allowed the ice to melt. After the first layer of ice melted, I added a few smaller cubes because those were melting much faster and just left the shirt alone. After the larger chunks of ice melted though, the dye had gone all the way down to the very outer portion of the shirt. So I just left the shirt alone and I allowed it to process for about 24 hours. Then I took the shirt to my utility sink and I started rinsing it in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. I warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. After rinsing for a while, I ran some really hot water in a plastic container, put a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent into the water and allowed the shirt to soak. I kept changing out the water when it cooled off and continued that soaking process until the water was almost clear. Then I put the shirt along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. So the shirt has been washed and dried and this is what it looks like. So I don't know about you guys, but I think this one looks really cool. I really love the texture and 
just the little bit of definition that it gives to do the twist part on the side of the shirt. You know, it makes the intensities of the colors so different over there and it just gives enough texture and design to the shirt to really be eye catching. I really like this color combination too. I think the colors just flow really well into one another. That pop of red right up at the top from, I think it's the ox blood, looks really cool. I like that. And I like the way the dye is just moving and flowing. It definitely gives me fall vibes. It kind of looks like a pot of fall mums or something like that. Especially that yellow one kind of right in the middle of the shirt really almost looks like a flower. I think that the darker areas toward the bottom of the shirt too, like in that twisted area, really give a lot of dimension to the shirt. It almost makes it look like shadows, like that part of the shirt is three dimensional. I think that's what gives me the flower vibe is the fact that that yellow kind of just pops off the shirt in that area. For the most part, I got decent color saturation. I mean, there are a couple of areas that are a little bit lighter than others, but I think that gives some interest to the shirt. Right down on the front toward the very bottom is one of those areas. It's not completely white, but I know it's a lot lighter than the rest of the shirt. And then up at the neck or the collar of the shirt, there's an area that's quite a bit lighter than the rest. In my opinion, some of the gravity dyes can be the most random. I know tie dye in general can be and kind of do what it wants to do, but as far as gravity dyes go, I can place the dye in a certain place, but because I'm doing these outside and the dye is going to move where it wants to on the shirt, I just have a little bit less control over the dye on a gravity dye. And believe it or not, I kind of like that. I like the more unique, random look of a shirt. If you like precision and you like to be able to control where absolutely all the dye goes, gravity dye may not be for you. But if you like the more unique, flowy, free flowing look, then this might be the technique for you. So I've tried a whole bunch of different designs and techniques with the gravity dye, but if you have something in particular you'd like to see if it could be gravity dyed, drop me a comment down below and let me know. I'm always looking for some new ideas of fun things that you guys would like to see or like for me to experiment with. And if you enjoy watching the content on my YouTube channel, I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.